Thank you, Ming. Um, by the way, good morning, DevCon 2. Ah, nice. I think developer conferences are always a little bit more fun than uh, business-oriented conferences, right? The, part, the participation from the audience is always fantastic. Excellent. Um, so I'm, my name is Mano. I'm from Autonomous. Um, we're in the business of incorporating companies, uh, but I'll use the analogy of the Starship USS Enterprise uh, blueprint that I have on the top there to describe what we're doing. Uh, so we're building the warp drive, right, in that schema that you see there. The warp drive is what's going to fuel innovation, production, um, and the starship is basically the startups, organizations, and so on. This is really the fr final frontier in automation. I think we've, over, over the years, we've automated a lot of things, whether it's self-driving cars or completely fully functional robots. Um, but where we haven't innovated is in the area of law, corporate law, legal processes, the way companies, organizations are governed, asset management, and so on. And this is kind of sad, and that's what we're trying to address. So before I go into how we do what we do and, 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 and um, our design pattern, it's important to understand first why the chartered company. So the chartered company, as I mentioned, is the underappreciated engine of innovation and production, right? Um, we all build amazing things only because we are organized. Uh, without that organization, I don't think we will achieve the things that Ethereum has achieved, for instance. And it's legal. Uh, so the way we designed our design pattern on the autonomous plan, um, everything that you do on our dashboard is completely legal. It's a mirror image of what happens in the real world. And honestly, I think it's the best use case for Ethereum smart contracts. I, I don't know why nobody else has done this before us, but I think it's the most straightforward use case that you can implement where you convert, in our case, we convert a certain section pertaining to corporate law into smart contracts, self-governing, self-executing, self-settling smart contracts. Hopefully, at some point, we'll decentralize the courts um, and then lawyers become coders. That'll be interesting. Um, so we, we, th this is basically what we do. Now, um, there's been a lot of talk the last couple of days about security, especially yesterday, there was formal verification stuff. All that is amazing. I'm a technologist, I'm a developer, so I really appreciate the mathematics b behind formal verification, but it's still complex stuff, right? It's not your average developer, average Joe developer that understands these things. Um, so there's a, another tip I'm going to give developers, especially new developers. You don't have to design things from scratch. Um, you don't have to create your own design patterns. You can seek inspiration from two locations. One is history, which is, what I've, which is why I've got this timeline here, and the other one is nature. And you can learn lessons from there and design your smart contracts. And this is how we do things as well. And if you look at history and the blockchain and the, the chartered company um, evolution over time, is sort of where we have arrived now with the blockchain charter company as autonomous. So the first charter company was somewhat in the 13th century. These were the traders, right? They went around the world. The ships were actually the, 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 the chartered company itself. Then you had the Dutch East India Company. Then you had the Industrial Revolution. And, and since the Industrial Revolution until today, there has not been much innovation in the space of the corporation, right? A lot of the processes, policies are still the same. Until we came along, Autonomous came along, and we put, we put the company on the blockchain. We allow you to govern the company through a series of smart contracts, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, and now, what have we achieved? We have automated the corporate governance process. And why do we want to automate the corporate governance process? Cost of doing business today is so expensive because we have to hire additional compliance people now for new regulations. We've got policies that, that are more complex for us to comply to. So we try to reduce all of this friction. We try to save startups especially money um, and let them focus on their core building of the Starship, right? So that's what we do. Um, and we, it's not that we don't believe in the decentralized autonomous organization, we do. And if you see, we build everything towards a future of a decentralized autonomous organization. Um, but what I believe, and if you see the, the headers there that I have, that last header um, shows you that for a truly decentralized autonomous organization, I think we need to go through some kind of socio-economic, political revolution before we're truly ready for a, an efficient decentralized autonomous organization. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say here in summary is that when we design stuff, we go by the secure by design framework, and the company, the, corp the corporation, the charter company, uh, through its years of evolution, has arrived at a certain state today um, and I think it's secure by design. So we just convert that secure by design framework into a smart contract. How do we do this? 
Um, before I can even speak about the company smart contract, which is basically our main bread and butter, I want to talk about the identity smart contract. So again, going back to the analogy of Star Trek, this is the dilithium crystals. I see a lot of blank faces. So I'm assuming you guys are not from the Star Trek generation. Okay. So dilithium crystal meaning that this is the fuel for everything else that we build and the central point um, of all interaction with a company smart contract. Now, what is this? Uh, the identity in our case can be, it's probably slightly different from the U-Port guys and anybody else that's, uh, that's building a, an identity smart contract. We had to make this because we wanted it to work with our ultimate use case of the company smart contract. So in our case, the identity can be two things. First, a persona, so a regular person, a natural individual. Second, a company, right? So it can be a collection of, uh, a company that's governed by a constitution, which is a collection of individuals. And it can also be a verification entity. So we said, you know, it's not enough for us to just allow the user to create an identity contract. We also need to verify this. And we don't want to do this in a central manner. We want to do this in a decentralized manner as well. And we said, okay, then we've got to create verification entities, uh, but the way we've built them, so autonomous in this case is a verification entity, and we, as a result of you having to, if you decide to incorporate a company with us, you will also create your identity, and we will then have to verify this identity. This identity can have a layered approach, so we do uh, a proof of uh, identity type KYC, where we ask for your proof of address, your, your passport copy, and so on. Uh, but this can easily be extended. So you can have a layered approach where a bank comes into play. Or you could have a government agency, for instance, verifying that a bank is allowed to do a specific type of KYC. And that's what you see at the bottom there on the left. Um, and more importantly, um, this identity smart contract also has got uh, identity information, right? So it's a collection of an encrypted identity file that is selectively shared. So by default, you can assume that it's shared with the public addresses of the verification entities. Um, and it has the stamps of these verification entities. So the KYC stuff I talked about, it's all in a collection of stamps, if you would. Um, and it routes calls. So if you go to the identity smart contract and you say, hey, get me the KYC um, of this identity with a specific bank, then it's going to route that call to that bank and get you the up-to-date KYC state. Should you, not, should you wish not to use the localized stamp. It's got a secure key recovery mechanism in place as well uh, that we've attached to the identity. So basically, it's not enough. And a lot of things we design, right? We understand, at the end of the day, people are using the system, and people are flawed. Systems might be perfect, but people always lose their keys. And we've had many, many people losing their keys. Actually, as we speak, I think even my developers are still um, uh, uh, recovering some client's key, I'm sure. Uh, so we've come up with a very secure way in which you can store your key and retrieve it. So even the retrieval mechanism that we've put in place ensures that after you've recovered, you can still continue to use the keys because they've not been compromised in any way during the recovery process. That's also something that we did. Um, and obviously, you need to be able to replace it. So in summary, I think we've identified or we've solved, at least for our use case, we've solved um, privacy, recovery, and compromise of identity, right? Um, and with this, you lay the foundation then to be able to sign documents, hold assets, and do whatever it is that you need to do otherwise in the real world, in the digital world. Now, this here is the main blueprint. Um, this is what we've been working very hard for the last one year. Actually, I wrote my first smart contract right about the same time when DEF CON 1 was going on. And today, we've got a whole suite of them. It's, it's interesting. Um, so central to, to, to all of this is the company smart contract. And what is a company smart contract? Itself is an identity. It's an identity that's controlled by the stakeholders of the company. So these can be directors, these can be shareholders, these can be a, this, there can be a corporate secretary involved in there. And they all do this by way of legal documents. So there are preset legal documents in the real world um, which you use to enact any action in the company smart contract. Whether it's a transfer of an asset, you want to add directors, any corporate action that you have to do is by way of the proper legal document and process. So we've also replicated real world legal processes. So there can be a multi-step process. There can be 10 documents that you need, let's say in the case of a funding round, and they might have a certain sequence, and that 10 documents will uh, have to be executed in the correct sequence, otherwise it will not work. I think I'm running out of time probably, but let me just quickly go through what else we are trying to do. Okay, so before that, so that's, that's what we do. So we've got a collection here that's got a, a complete trace of legal documents, identities, transactions, everything. But what is cool is those two pu pu purple circles that you see. One is the decentralized exchange. 
the company itself could become a decentralized exchange, which is pretty interesting. And you can also do that by way of a synthetic equity um, uh, a framework as well. And we've also designed this already. So this is my synthetic equity smart contract. In summary, I'm not going to go through it, but it is a, um, a way to replicate the payoff that you would otherwise have by holding real equity um, via a smart contract. So that's basically what this does. So that is something that uh, we've designed, we haven't implemented yet, and this is what I mean when I say we're working towards a completely decentralized autonomous organization at some point. Um, these are the things that you would need. And of course, the company has a decentralized exchange. This is a very interesting slide too. I'm not gonna go into the details, but in one line, your company is a decentralized exchange now. So this is also very powerful working towards this. And the team, uh, if I may, just be before, before I get cut off here, I think uh, the team, Han, our CEO, is right there. And the team that's always working hard with me on the weekends. Guys, stand up and take a bow, please. Gen ladies and gentlemen, these are the guys that uh, give up their weekends for me. Thank you very much.